Salt Shaken Sisters, Barbara Chapman, Hondo, Texas. We're starting a series on the second book of Timothy, and I'll be in the chair in just a moment with video number one. Hi, ladies. This is Barbara Chapman. Let me get in my chair here. Move some things around. All right. I've got to write down. Um, we're going to be starting in 2 Timothy. This is January 2nd, 2012. A brand new year with a brand new start. This is the fourth book in the, um, let's see, Daily Walk with Jesus, Simply Sharing His Word, the book of 2 Timothy. And we'll know when we get through here how many videos it's going to take. And uh, let me put the time down here as we normally do as I speak. Like I said, this is Barbara Chapman with Salt Shake and Sisters. I live in Hondo, Texas, and we've got a website which is www.wow-womenofword.com. And then we have the uh, YouTube website that has all the videos of all the lessons out there. And that's www.youtube.com backslash user backslash 007 baths. So let's see, it's 2.26. And we can do these videos in about 30 minute increments. And I have my clock here, which is my phone. And I'm going to also start the uh, recorder so we can make a CD of this. It's amazing how when you move that thing, it just picks up everything. It's so, so sensitive. All right, I've got my tin ready to go. So what we'll do is we'll pray that God would speak to us and that hopefully we can get this lesson through in about four or five videos. That seems to be what the lessons have been. And uh, move on, all right? Okay, Father, we just uh, thank you for this day. We come to you in your precious Son's name, Jesus. We pray that you would uh, speak to us in this study of Second Timothy. Teach us what it is that you want us to uh, learn. Help us to remember it. Help us to apply it to our lives. Help us to be real. And I pray that uh, you would just use me as a vessel and that you would help calm me down and that you would speak and share your word as you would have it. And I just uh, thank you for the gift. I thank you for salvation, all the many, many blessings. And, uh, and the blessings that are coming in 2012. And I just um, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay. Now, I don't make New Year's resolutions. I guess a lot of people do. But it seems like, you know, we all kind of laugh about it because the next day or so we've forgotten about it. There are things, I, I like routine, and I was just kind of lying with my sister, and she goes, oh, routine, Ugh, she kind of hates it. I think for most part, about 85% of the time, I like routine because it keeps me, I'm structured and it keeps me going. But there are so many times, man, when I am tired of it, I want a break, which was so great in the month of um, December 2011, I had a two different weeks where I had five days off, which was really nice and much needed. This is my last day off for a while and um, so I'm trying to get geared up. I've got, when I finish Timothy, I've finished all the lessons, all the videos, everything, praise God, has been done through what I had been working on in 2011. So now I'll be able to start fresh studying another uh, series, which I believe will be Thessalonians. But everything's done. It's clear and Lord willing, by the end of the day, everything will be out on YouTube and, and ready to go and I can start fresh. Uh, now I do get in these, let's see, December, December and January, you know, we all got to get used to writing 2012. We were writing 2011. How many of us are going to be writing 2011 for a while? So anyway, um, what I want to share too is I, I have different mentors and different teachers that I listen to all the time. And one thing that's really kind of neat is the last, one of the last books, James, I did, uh, it took me four months to go through that. And I've done Timothy since then, but I still walk through James personally all the time. And I'm going through that and listen, take some things. And what's interesting is when I get finished with a book, it seems like I have a mentor, I have a lady that does some teaching, and she'll have a teaching or something comes out right after I get done with the book, she'll come out with something that's on the same thing. It's so cool. And what's really neat is I just finished Second Timothy, and now I find that she's had a conference, and in that conference, it's a lot about some uh, scriptures in Second Timothy, mostly chapter 4. And she hit on some things I was listening to today that I thought, you know what, that is just so right on, God, confirmation. I finished 2 Timothy, then you give me 
uh, more confirmation. I get some more learning from another teacher on it. And also she confirms and was helping with some issues that I was going through and walking through and still walking through. And I may be able to share some of that with you in this study. I'm not sure. So we'll see if God allows me because it's pretty, uh, pretty personal. But I know that being in the ministry, God's Word says that I'm more accountable. Those that teach and have the gift of teaching are more accountable. And I take that seriously. It doesn't, And I know it doesn't mean I'm going to be perfect because none of us are. But we want to strive to be like Jesus. We want to strive, not strain, not walk in frustration, not walk in condemnation. Because I know that God loves me. I know He forgives me. I know He has grace and mercy. But I want so much to have a heart to do His will and to walk in his way and be an example and be a pattern because I want to lead others to Christ and I want to be able to walk the walk so I can have that joy and victory and then also some things that I go through to be able to empathize and feel for the women when they're going through something I'll be able to understand more because some of it I've gone through and some of it I haven't but God's grace is always big enough and you know his word also says to be you know ready in season and out of season so we need to be prepared to help those that are in need and God is gracious enough to do that so I'm kind of getting off a little bit so what I want to do is I'm not going to take a whole lot of time on introductory because if you've been with us in any of the videos um, the books are all have gotten have evolved into pretty much a study guide and I shared step by step in first Timothy how it changed and how simple it is where we uh, have you actually do the study along with us so um, having said that, I'm going to go ahead and share how this little book works. And you probably don't have the book, but it's not necessary that you do. Because if you follow along, you can study with this without actually having this. And I don't have it online because it's too much. I'm going to try to learn how to do them in PDF and send them at some point. But the way you use this book and the way you use this uh, video uh, teaching, Life's Application Series on 2 Timothy, there's two ways. There's two ways to use this book, this study. You can utilize it as a daily, weekly, or just any time reading, or you just sit down and read the book of, you know what, I've got this, I've, got, I've fixed my typos, that was James, in 2 Timothy, all right, um, with my personal insight at the end of each section, section, or what you can do is, is a couple of things. You can use it as a very simple study. Um, I've got James in here, guys. I keep catching my typos. It's a good thing I did this because I'll take some things from the previous book and just change it when I have a new one. And this says James from the last book I did, but this is 2 Timothy. Okay, you start by reading through the first few pages, the introduction and things like that. You read the Bible chapters in the front of the book. Now you begin your personal study by going to the first lesson in 2 Timothy and the note-taking page, all right? So... Again, 2 Timothy. So, having said that, and because you don't have the book in front of you, like I said, when we start in that, you can just follow me in a few minutes and see what I'm talking about as far as how to use this study and uh, learn God's Word. The introduction for 2 Timothy, this is what I have for the introduction of 2 Timothy, that this is... The fourth, the fourth book we've written in our Life Application Bible Study series. The first one was Ephesians. The second was James, which is probably, I thought Ephesians was my favorite because I was in it for years. But James is just an um, awesome book. Awesome book. Small but powerful. Uh, Ephesians, James, 1 Timothy, and now 2 Timothy. If you've never read any of these personal life application studies, let me give you a brief update of where these studies were birthed. This all started in 2007, not long after my godly Christian mentor, Susie Thompson, passed away from cancer and went to be with Jesus on 2-13-2007. I was awakened from a dream about 3 a.m. and given the scripture, Psalms 32 a. You have to be curious enough to go look that up. I've shared it in many, many things, but that scripture is what I hang on to when there's not much else to hang on to on those days that we all have. Uh, it continues. It continues to amaze me. How this gift of writing very simple studies has changed from 2007 till now. It's just a God thing. It really is. These books are meant to point you to the Word of God and to help you personalize the Scriptures, giving you and I daily wisdom, direction, guidance, and uh, help for everyday circumstances 
in this life's journey. We all need help and encouragement, and we pray you'll learn how to study and receive God's revelation by the time that you complete this uh, study series with us in 2 Timothy. All right. Let's, uh, and then I also have our mission statement, which is Hebrews 4.12. And then I have where the salt shaken sisters came from. And that came from Matthew 5, 13 through 16. We are the salt of the earth. And if you want to look up that, I'll let you do that. Now I have a couple of acronyms. I love acronyms. And um, I don't get them as much as I used to. And probably a lot of people, they get acronyms and they're pretty short. Most of my acronyms, they started out short, but they get a bit lengthy. So they vary in range. I'll get a word, and I hear the word endurance a lot because you know you've got to be able to have endurance to walk through life successfully, happy, joyfully, and, and just really getting out there and not being uh, down and out all the time. You've got to endure. So I got an acronym for endurance, and let me share that with you if you don't mind. Um, and I think I just got endurance probably about a week ago because that's, that's, that's what you got to have. You just got to have it. Um, I'll try to stay hooked with the book because I get excited and I want to get off on something else and then we'll never get through the book if I don't stay with it. Endurance, um, endurance is needed. It's required. It's a must for our daily understanding of trials that are reality in this life. It gives us the ability, the strength, and the fortitude needed to walk out our Christian lifestyle, therefore being an example to others. Okay? Uh, endurance, this is what endurance means, and ladies, I pray that uh, you'll ask God for more endurance every day, and I ask for it every time I can think of it. Endurance means the ability to last, to stand pain, to tolerate, to bear pain without flinching. Okay, alrighty then. So ladies, endurance means to bear pain without flinching. So we've got to be able to bear it because that's just life. But God's grace and His mercy and his, just who He is being with us sure makes it a whole lot easier. Because there is, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. All right? And then I have the acronym Salvation. I've used that and, and shared that in many books. But um, we'll go ahead and share that today because it's in the book. we got Salvation. Salvation is God's answer to living victoriously after you receive your full assurance of eternal life. When you trust and accept Jesus as your Savior and ask Him into your heart, old things, your old life will pass away and new life begins. So you get into God's Word and you grow up in Him, start your new relationship with Him. So praise God, maybe you're starting a new walk with God in 2012. And um, this is a good place to start with God's Word and fellowship. Get in a church. Get someone to mentor you. And uh, just seek God's face and He'll give you direction and help you be what He wants you to be. Um, old things pass away as you take your new journey with God. Listen to and obey His Word of instructions. All your answers are in the book. Renew your mind. Renew your mind with the washing of the Word. Alright, this is the... Uh, this is the contents in the 2 Timothy book. I'll go through. I won't give you each of the scriptures, but I'll give you some of the titles that are going to be in some of our lessons today. All right, we have uh, the first one is questions. Questions. Then we've got stir it up. And we've got are you ashamed? Keep on keeping on. Been rejected lately? Are you enlisted as a soldier? And sometimes I just have one word, and this word is and. That's the title, the word and. And you'll have to stay with me to see what and is all about, okay? Are you chained up in the old ball and chain? Endurance. And what it is is E-N-D dot 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 endurance. Endurance. And we just gave the definition for that a while ago, right? And what was the definition for endurance? And we all got to have it. God, bring on endurance in the year 2012 and draw us closer to you in Jesus' name. Endurance is the ability to last, to stand pain, tolerate, bear pain without flinching. Oh, God, give us endurance. Give us endurance. Yes. Painstaking. Painstaking is the next one. The next title is, What Are You Made Out Of? What Are You Made Out Of? The next one is, The Great Escape. The next one is, it's not all about me. 
And the next one is been exposed. Then we have, I don't want to deal with this. Then we have, are you working with proper equipment? We have, tis the season. We have good fights. We have only the lonely. We have deliverance from your lions. And the last one, 2 Timothy chapter 4, 19 through 22, end of the trail, the last ride. Praise God. And of course, at the end of each one of the books, I have the 11 simple steps, which is the foundation of all this that God has given us. Then I have my personal uh, salvation testimony, how I got saved. God saved me from religion. And then I have some review questions. I share a couple of pictures in here. And in this one, uh, not this, not today, but in 1 Timothy that we just got on the YouTube and the website a week ago, right after Christmas when I had the Christmas time off, Zip the zipper was in my lap the whole time. He thinks when I'm sitting in this chair that he has to be sitting on my lap. So he's not here today, so I don't have any dogs in here, which is unusual for me. I've got three dogs at home today. They're all on front porch because it's a beautiful day outside. Of course, now I hear one bark because I'm saying it. But Zip the zipper is with Wayne because Wayne had to go to Del Rio, so he's with him. But he's still nursing a hurt foot, but it's so much better. And you'll see him in 1 Timothy uh, series he had he even had a cone on his neck because he wouldn't quit chewing so he's getting a whole lot better so anyway back to the book we have um, in the book I'll put uh, I believe it's New King James Version I'll have all I believe it's my like four chapters I'll put all four chapters in the front of the book all right and then what I do is I think you can see this when I have the book and you can go get right now if you're going to study this with me go get your notepad get your journal if you have one and what we're going to do is teach you how to hear from God. And that way you can pause. I've been saying the tape. You can pause the CD or the YouTube and go along with this. You can use it at your own pace. There's no time limits. There's no constraints. None of that stuff so you don't get into bondage. You do this when it's between you and God, not anybody else. So you can hear from God. So we'll get into that in a minute. But if you go get your notebook, okay, go get a, a, a notepad, uh, whatever you want to get. And what you'll do is you'll write down... Get your Bible out and go to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Open your Bible. I'm not going to... Let me see if I've got... In some of these books... Yeah. In this one, I've, I've, I keep changing them. On this one, I give the space for you as a person to sit down and open your Bible to 1 Timothy 1, 1 through 4, and you write down in your quiet time. You just sit here and you write down those four verses. Okay, and then you'll sit there and you'll read those verses, and you may read them however many times you feel like you need to read them. And as you read them, if there's some words that jump off at you, then you've got rhyme, or, or, uh, space to write down some words that might have jump, jumped off the page at you, so you write those down. And then if so, uh, you have time permits or you really are feeling... You want more clarification or however God has you study, you might want to pull out your dictionary and look up some of those words. Just like you, uh, I gave you the definition for endurance. I looked it up in the dictionary and I put it down here. And then you sit there and you just kind of pray a few minutes and, and however God leads you and you look at it and you ask God to speak to you personally in His Word. And, and what in that, is there something in that today that's going to help you to um, make better choices, to give you strength, to give you encouragement. What is in God's Word today that you need a, a, a let's see, what's the word? Or you need a Rima, Rima word today. So, you do that. And then when you get done with that, praise God, I'd love to hear, I would so much love to hear from someone at B underscore Chapman at Yahoo.com. That's B underscore C-H-A-P-M-O-N-D at Yahoo.com to hear what God might have spoke to you. And I'd be blessed to be able to share it with the other Salt Shaken Sisters. So you've done that. And if you want to, then you can go further and you can sit down and you can read what God gave me from my heart. Or however you want to do it. There's two ways. You can sit here and just read the whole book. You can sit down and probably read the whole thing in probably an hour or, or less. Or you could make this last two months. It's totally, it can be used in so many ways. It's totally between you and God. And that's what's so neat about it. Because the whole, my whole heart with Salt Shaken Sisters is one is to love the women, and God is really, really 
taking me through it with that. And I'm, I'm going to start tomorrow, not as a resolution, but tomorrow I'm going to get back on riding my bike. And I've got this great big, if I think that I might go get it later. And it's so perfect that this board, and I put it in front of my bike. And I've got these scriptures on love. And, and it's really, really, really challenging for me to memorize things. God keeps all this stuff going and gives me words. But I need some verses. And I, like I said, I may share with you where this initiated. Because it can be painstaking and hurtful whenever love is a lot of action. And there's not a, there doesn't necessarily have to be feelings in it. Because when you love, it beareth all, believeth all, doesn't puff up, it doesn't envy, doesn't get jealous. Love is a lot of things, and um, so I've got some scriptures I want to try to memorize, so I've got them on my bike, so I may share with you later how that goes, but I'm planning on finishing 2 Timothy today, so you won't know how my memorization on my bike goes till probably some other video series, but anyway, uh, 2 Timothy 1, 1 through 4, and I did put it in the book, and then I'll share my heart. So, let me go over here. Let me see what time it is, okay? Because we've got 30 minutes on these. And I said we started at, I have to see, we started at 2.26. And it's 2.45, so we've got about 10 minutes. All right, ladies? So, we've got 2 Timothy 1, 1 through 4. And the title for today is Question. The title for this lesson is Questions. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ, Timothy's faith and heritage. You'll notice a lot of times that, he, that Paul says a lot about grace, mercy, and peace. And I thought, you know, God, I'd like to be able to remember that and pass that on as a prayer. It's grace, mercy, and peace. Listen to the blah, 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 blah. You hear me do that a lot if I don't slow down. See, even God can use the simple things, which is what I am. He can use mistakes. And only God can make really good, neat things come out of some of our stupid mistakes. And I just give Him praise for it. I just, I am so glad that He does that. And I'm, I'm sure you probably are too. So help me be transparent and real. And um, just keep moving on. Okay, ladies? All right, all right. So, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, okay? And then in verse 3 it says, I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day. And this is Paul talking to Timothy. Greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I be filled with joy. Well, let me see, what did I get out of that for me personally in my uh, life application? And this is what is from my heart. And I believe that I, sometimes I don't get that much, and you'll find the same thing. Sometimes I'm not in it that long. I could be sitting there for 10 minutes, and sometimes I could be there for an hour or more. It just, it totally depends on your time and how God and His Holy Spirit comes and speaks to you and ministers you. This one I got quite a bit, and I've got some, some points. So let me go ahead and start. This is from my heart. What I got personally when I read Paul talking to Timothy in verses 1 through 4. I got some questions. Number one, what is God's will for your life? Number two, what is the promise of life? Number three, what does beloved mean? Are you? Number four, how often do you ask or receive God's grace? Number five, what does serving mean to you? talking to me okay in what capacity do you serve in what capacity do I serve if you're not serving what is keeping you from doing so and again I'm talking to myself but when I write it down here I'm using the word you which was me number six how do we obtain a pure conscience number seven what does ceasing mean number eight how do you remember others in prayer Number nine, be mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy. What does what the Old Believer's Bible commentary have to say about that verse? Wow. This is a very different way for me to start off a study in our scripture. I don't usually have so many questions right up front, but I did this morning. Let me give you my answers, then you can answer for yourself in your own private, quiet time, okay? So the first question I have was, what is God's will for my life? 
And I put next to it Psalms 32, 8. That's the scripture I hold on to. And I won't read it, but um, I'll let you look that up. It's basically where God was telling me he's going to teach me and guide me and direct my, my studies so I can share them with you all. Number two, um, what is the promise of life to me, Barbara Chapman? It's salvation, heaven, and security. Number three, uh, what does beloved mean and am I beloved? I'm beloved by God. Yes, I am beloved. That's what I answered that. Number four, how often do you ask or receive God's grace? And I said, all the time, every day. Thank you, Jesus. Number five, what does serving mean to me? It means others first. In what capacity do I serve in women's ministry? And then is, uh, if you're not serving, what's keeping you from doing it? Well, what gets in my way from serving God, and I put down here and being honest, is bitterness, offense, hurt, jealousy, and envy. And you know, women are the worst for being competitive and, and, and dealing with some of these things. So we just need to fess up that it, it is something that comes through our lives and we need to confess it and ask God to give us victory over it and know that it's sin, know that it's wrong and get those scriptures to cover that and go on and keep fighting it. And I heard one of my mentors say, if you're not fighting it, you're doing it. So fight the good fight. And that's one of the things we're going to be learning about in 2 Timothy. Fight the good fight. And I won't go any further on that because we will, we will share that in a little bit. Um, number six, how do we obtain a pure conscience? And I said minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, striving to continue my, my relationship with the Father. Number seven, what does ceasing mean? What does ceasing mean? And I looked up the word, and it, ceasing means to bring to an end, discontinue, die out, to terminate. Okay? Number eight, how do you remember others in prayer? I have a prayer basket that helps me. And then number nine, being mindful of your tears. Um, all right, I, I put down here, if you're looking at the next page, so I think this is where sometimes you know I look up, uh, I use the Believer's Bible Commentary, and there's a lot of them out there, and that's just the one that speaks to me, and I feel comfortable with and trust that when I do read it, it's, 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 it's right on with, it, with God's Word, and I've also got confirmation from other scriptures, other words, and also my husband. Um, so it looks like, let me not get ahead of myself, I'll keep reading, because I believe I got in the Believer's Bible Commentary, but I've got here, today's title is questions, and I had a lot of them, and I shared my answers of what what uh, they meant to me. I've not been able to commit to starting, I have not been able to commit to starting a new study for over a month. So I had a, a month span there between 1 Timothy and getting into 2 Timothy. I just, it wasn't time. I just couldn't get into studying. I, I would read, I was studying and listen to different teachings, but I couldn't just sit down in my quiet time and, and really get started on a new study. Because I can't force it. When I sit down, it's got to come where I read and God helps me put pen to paper. And I, if I'm striving at it, it's, not, it's time for me to put it up and, and forget about it because that's God's not going to honor it for me personally. So when he starts flowing, I get to share it. And when it's not, I don't get to. So I've been listening to several teachers via email, devotional study, good CD, CDs, and DVDs. DVD. Sometimes I need to hear and see things several, several times in order to get it. That's, that's me. I'm very visual. The light bulb doesn't flash on nearly as quickly as I would like for it to sometimes. So I like those light bulbs because when it jumps off the page or the light bulb comes on, it's like, praise God, I got it, I got it. And when I, I get it in here. When I get it in here, it goes a whole lot further and goes through my beings a lot more than it just goes through my head. I can get all kinds of things all day long in my head. But when I get it in my knower, I call it my knower. When I get it in my knower, I know, I know, I know in my knower in my heart. I got it. I've got victory when I get that and peace. Okay. I want and need so much to get the word in my heart and mind. It makes such a difference in my heart, soul, and mind. As I start this new study, study, which seems to be for me personally, which I want to take it that way. God's word is personal to anybody that reads it in whatever stage of life that you are in at that time. I always seem to realize God hits me where I live so much quicker when I sit still and look at three to five verses and allow him to search my heart and then start talking to me. 
I do believe there is just something supernatural, supernatural from God about getting a word firsthand and personal from God. Much more so than what I received from someone else sharing their firsthand revelations from God. And I praise God for, for I pray, I read a lot of stuff and I love devotionals, but there's just nothing like firsthand God putting that light bulb on and jumping off the page at you. There's just, there's nothing like it. And when you get it, when you get it and the light bulb flashes on, you're going to know what I'm talking about and you'll agree with me. And I pray that you get that in 2 Timothy if you've not gotten it before. And if you've had it, praise God, you can join the... Join, join in with, with the joy with me for knowing what that means. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but it's a God thing. It really is it's a God thing. I also want to go on the record today and say I would not grow up without the help and guidance of teaching of those women, women and men that God has placed in my life. Thankful. This is one of those tough seasons of life, but isn't that normal life? We all have different stuff going on all the time. I'm not sure what stage or time during this book I will make it through this test to share all of it with you. So for now, I will continue to walk, cry, hurt, repent, endure, confess, ask for help, and continually try to hear from God through His Word and ask for His grace, peace, and mercy to make it to the other side of the mountain. Don't give up or give in. Serve encourage others no matter how you feel serve and encourage others no matter how you feel and I'm talking to myself ladies I am so talking to myself and just putting it on paper so if this is speaking to you I, I pray that you take it from God and not me pointing a finger or getting offense because I'm just sharing what I penned on paper that God was speaking to me personally from my heart so serve and encourage others no matter how I feel. And that takes endurance. Feelings will let you down and lead you astray if you're not careful in seeking God's wisdom and discernment. Satan will use your feelings against you. Beware of his schemes. He is real and on the move at all times. Question number nine. Let's see what I have for question number nine. Question number nine, this is what I had. Be mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. What does the old Believer Bible Commentary have to say about this verse? So I opened the Believer's Bible Commentary to answer that question, because I didn't. I was questioning that myself. And this is what I read that made sense to me. The Believer's Bible Commentary says this. How it must have touched Timothy's heart to read these words from Paul. Paul was homesick to see Timothy, a mark of love. It speaks of gracious tenderness and humility on Paul's part. Perhaps it was the last time they parted that Timothy broke down. His tears had made a deep impression on Paul. So there's some moving times there. They were going to, it was just, it was a touching time. When our sympathy, when our sympathy loses, loses its pain, pain, P-A-N-G, when our sympathy loses its pain, we can no longer be the servants of the passion. Ouch. I need the pain. Fill me afresh, Abba Father. Amen. Okay, let me see. You know what? I don't know what it is, but it seems like it, it always takes about 30 minutes when we start a new book for the introduction and for the very first lesson. It's just kind of a given. It's about 30 minutes. So that was our first video number one. And y'all come back and video number two, video number two is 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 5 through 7. And we're going to start it at 3 o'clock. By the time it's 2.59 by the time I get it and start. Okay, so I'll see you in a few minutes later. You come back, we'll be on video number two, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 5 through 7. And the title is Stir It Up stirred up. So you hang in there and you come back and we'll get stirred up together, okay? All right. Be right back.